What is going on guys, it's Amit, you're watching Dev Dreamer, and welcome to lesson 25 in JavaScript. In this lesson, we're going to be learning all about the for loop. If you enjoy the content, don't forget to like and subscribe down below and choose all notifications by clicking the bell so you never miss an update. Okay, so welcome back to lesson 25. So now that we've learned all about conditional statements in the last few lessons, let's now focus on loops. So remember, loops allow us to perform repetitive tasks with less code. And this is done by repeating a piece of code over and over again, according to certain conditions. Now, as we learned about in our lesson on control flow, there are many different loops and we'll be covering them all in the coming lessons. We'll start in this lesson with the for loop. The for loop is best suited for those scenarios where we want to do things a fixed number of times. For example, rolling a die a specific number of times. Okay, so let's understand how it works and how to write the for loop. So a for loop consists of three parts, the initializer, the condition, and then finally the final expression. Let's write out a simple for loop that loops through a line of code multiple times to print out the numbers 1 to 10 in the console. So to write a for loop, we use the word for, space, parentheses, and then curly braces. So once again then very similar to a switch statement or an if statement, but instead of the words if or switch, we're using the word for. Now, as mentioned then, the for loop consists of three parts, the initializer, the condition, and the final expression. And all of those go inside this parentheses here. So first we have the initializer, then we have the condition, and then finally we have the final expression. And then in between the curly braces is going to be the code that we want to execute. So here then we want to print out the numbers zero to 10 in the console. So in between our curly braces here, I'm going to say console.log. So let's fill these in first, and then we'll come back to this. So first of all, the initializer. The initializer is executed once before the code block. This here is the code block. And what the initializer basically is, is a variable set to a value. So here I'm going to say, let i be assigned the value of zero. So before anything happens in our for loop, the initializer is executed first. So i has a value of zero. The next thing we need is the condition. So this basically defines the condition for executing the code block. As long as this is true, then our code block will run. So here I'm going to say is i less than or equal to 10. So in other words, if i is equal to anything between zero to 10, then run this code block. If it's 11 or above, then don't run this code block. And then finally we have the final expression. And this is executed every time after the code block is run. So here I'm going to say i plus plus. So we're taking our variable of i and we're incrementing it by one. So now that we've filled these in, so we've got our initializer, our condition, and our final expression, for our code block here, we're going to console.log the value of i. Let's go ahead and save and see what we get in the console. Okay, perfect. So the console logs the numbers zero to 10. So let's go through this step by step and understand exactly what's happening. So first we said, let i be assigned the value of zero. Remember, this is executed before anything else. The second thing that happens is our condition is checked. So is i less than or equal to 10? Well here i is 0, so this condition will be true. 0 is less than or equal to 10. And since our condition is true, our code block is run. So we say console.log i. And at this point, i has a value of 0, which is why we get 0 here in the console. The final thing that happens is our final expression. Remember we said that this is executed every time after the code block is run. So once this is run, then we have our final expression. And this now says, take i, which has a value of zero at the moment, and increment it by one by doing plus plus. So now i has a value of one. And now we go through this again. So now i has a value of one. So is one less than or equal to 10? Yep, that's true. And so our code block is run. So we get console.log i, i is one, and so we get one in the console. And once again, since our code block has run, our final expression is executed. So once again, we have i plus plus, or one plus plus now. So i now has a value of two and so we go through the loop again. This continues all the way until the number 10. Let's see what happens when i is equal to 10. So here we say, is 10 less than or equal to 10? Well, this condition will be true because whilst 10 is not less than 10, it is equal to 10. And again, since it's true, our code block runs and we get 10 logged to the console. And then once again, it's onto our final expression. So we say i plus plus or 10 plus plus. So now i has a value of 11. Now let's see what happens. Let's check the condition. Is 11 less than or equal to 10? This of course is false. 11 is more than 10. And so since our condition is now false, this code block no longer runs. So our for loop ends, and that's why we don't see 11 in the console. So that's the basic usage of the for loop. 
Now, you might be asking, what does the letter I stand for? Well, I has become somewhat of a convention whenever writing a for loop, but in reality, we can actually use any variable name that we want. Whilst, of course, keeping in mind variable naming rules. So we could change this to num for number. So we can say let num, let's change this, this, and this. Change them all to num. Let's save this. And once again, this works in exactly the same way. Another thing that we can technically do is we can declare the variable outside of this for loop. Now, of course, this isn't really advised because it's not really the convention of how to write a for loop, but let me show you that this is actually possible. So let's remove our variable from there. And before the for loop outside, we can say let num be signed the value of zero. So over here, we're just going to say num. Now let's go ahead and save. And once again, that works just as normal. However, as mentioned, whenever we do write a for loop, we should be sticking to the convention. Okay, let's take a look at another example. Now for this example, we're going to be creating an array. So we're going to say const character. We will be looking at arrays very shortly. In fact, it's going to be the next thing we look at after loops. So this is going to be an array of characters. So we're going to say Sonic, Tails, let's go for two more. We'll say Mario and finally Luigi. And for this example, rather than just looping through these and logging them to the console, we're going to be using the DOM, which we looked at briefly in the previous lesson, to actually render this in our page. Okay, so first then, let's go ahead and create a empty paragraph tag. And now I'm going to say, let para, which is just short for paragraph, be assigned the value of document.querySelector, and we're looking for our p tag. Okay, next I'm going to say, let info be assigned the value of the string, which is going to say, the characters are, then we'll do space. And actually this should be a template literal. So let's just change this like so. Okay. Now we're going to create our for loop. So we can say for parentheses, curly braces. Let's go ahead and include our initializer, our condition and our final expression. So for the initializer, I'm going to say, let, let's just use I here. So I'm going to say I, be assigned the value of zero. And then for the condition, we're going to say I less than the number of values inside our array. So here then we have one, two, three, four values. This should actually be characters, sorry. So we've got four values inside our array, but rather than just writing four, we want to make sure that this is dynamic so that if in the future we add any more characters to this, we won't need to keep coming back and updating this condition. So in here we're going to say is I less than characters dot length. And what this will do is it will give us the length of our characters array, which in this scenario is four. Okay, so that's our condition. And then once again, for our final expression, we're going to say I plus plus. Now, what we're looking to do here is we're looking to print out these values, not as bullet points, but simply as a comma separated list. So the way that we're going to do this is we're going to be using a conditional statement. And the one that we need is an if else statement. So here's what we're going to say. We're going to do if I is equal to characters dot length minus one, then in our curly braces, we're going to say info. Remember our info variable up here, which says the characters are, and then we're going to say plus equals and characters i. Now this here is basically how we select a value inside an array. So we use the array name, and then in square brackets, we use an index number. And finally this here, dollar sign curly braces, is how we can use our variables inside template literals. We're now going to say else, so if this condition is not true, then we're going to say, take info and we'll say plus equals characters I comma space. Finally, let's go ahead and select our paragraph down here. We're going to say para, then we're going to say dot in a text, be assigned the value of info. So in other words, we're taking this info variable and we're placing it inside of our paragraph tag. So now if we save, Perfect, we get the characters are Sonic, Tails, Mario, and Luigi. And if we just have a look at the HTML here, you can see right here, this information here from our for loop has been put inside of our paragraph tag. So guys, that's all about how to use the for loop. Let's go ahead and summarize. So loops will repeat a piece of code over and over again while certain conditions are true. The for loop is the most common type of loop, and it consists of three parts, the initializer, the condition, and finally, the final expression. Using a for loop, we can loop through a list of values and then do something with them. For example, we can simply list them out or we can do something with custom text. And finally, the for loop is perfect for scenarios where we know the exact amount of iterations or loops that we need. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at your tasks for this lesson. Okay, so just a single task for this lesson then. Create an array of five colors. Use any five colors you like. 
and then use a for loop to iterate over each color with the statement, color is my favorite color, and then console log the results. So I'll go ahead and pause the video, try this out, and when we come back, we'll take a look at the answer. So how'd you get on then? Let's see. So first of all, let's go ahead and create our array. So I'm going to say const colors, and in here, let's just paste these in. Okay, so I've gone for the colors red, blue, green, orange, and purple. And now we need to use a for loop to iterate over these and log color is my favorite color. So here we're going to say for. For our initializer, we're going to say let color be assigned the value of zero. And then for our condition, we're going to say is color less than colors.length. And then finally, for our final expression, we're going to say color plus plus. For our core block, we're going to say console.log. We use template literals to pull this variable in. So we're going to say colors. And then in square brackets, it's going to be our color variable. So this is selecting our color, either red, blue, green, orange, or purple. And then we're going to say is my fave color. So that should be it. Let's go ahead and save. Perfect. So in the console, then we get color is my fave color. And we've looped through all of them. So guys, well done on completing that task. That's it for this lesson. In the next lesson, we're going to continue learning about loops by looking at the next set of loops, which are the while and do while loops. So be sure to tune in. Don't forget to comment, share, like, and subscribe down below, and I'll see you on the next one.